Most people tell, talk about themselves in a chronological order, and I will be doing some of that, but for the most part, I will um, be referring to what I call so far as my triple A life, and not the, uh, the auto company or the travel agency, but what I mean by triple A is I have and I've had and have an arts life, an athletic life, and an academic life. I thought that represented your credit rating. <laughs> <laughs> that does represent that too. <laughs> but I'm not talking about that too. So starting off with, with my arts life, when I was um, 10 years old, I was heavily influenced by music in general. Um, my parents always had either jazz or R&B or funk or something playing in, um, in, in the home. And at this particular time, the, the, the best thing going, and this was 72, was, uh, I was, excuse me, was 82, was Michael Jackson's Thriller. And he had just won like eight Grammys and broken all of the records. <coughs> and I saw him uh, do Billie Jean and his little dance for the first time, and I was immediately bit. So for Halloween uh, that, that, that year, my mother made me this, you know, bought this little glove and put sparkles on it and <laughs> got me these high water pants. And I actually entered a talent show. And um, I lip synced and danced to Billie <coughs> Jean. But when I was done, uh, everybody stood up and, and was clapping. And I was kind of confused because I was, like I said, I was a fifth grader. And, Later on, I asked my mom, you know, why was everybody standing up and, and clapping? And she said, well, honey, that's, you got a standing ovation. That means that you did really, really well. So I'm backstage waiting for the particular results. And, you know, we're this fifth grade talent show is dancing and singing and people playing instruments and telling stories and all that. And long story short, I won. And the winning prize was $20. Twenty dollars? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I could have bought a mansion. Yeah, yeah, I could. I could retire. And um, I remember buying all of my friends ice cream, and it was uh, it was a, a, a quarter for a scoop of ice cream. So you know, I was like, sure, you can get one, and you can get one. So I was a very popular kid at, at that particular time. I also uh, found then a love of singing, and I joined choir. And um, so uh, here I am, 10-year-old kid, starting to learn to dance and uh, learn jazz tap, ballet, hip hop, and I'm also in choir. Well, typically when you're 10 years old, growing up in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, I originally was born in the projects, we were low income, those two things aren't really cool for a 10-year-old boy to be doing <laughs> dancing and, and singing. So people had all types of things to say about me and, and who I was. Moving forward um, into high school, going into uh, various talent shows and uh, doing various things, a couple of friends of mine who moved in from Florida, and I had moved to Minnesota, um, I met and we started singing together. And after graduating high school and going to college, we started traveling the nation actually, singing, doing some acapella stuff and doing some jazz stuff and a little bit of R&B. So I was, um, I was 20 years old at the time and I actually stopped going to college. We were traveling and I was making about $1,500 a month and 20 years old <coughs> once again, I'm like, pay dirt, no, not really uh, many bills, 1500 a month, I am rich. <laughs> And uh, there was this one summer in particular that we were at um, the, uh, it was called uh, Glam Slam at that time. And it was Princess Club. <laughs> and it was, and it was uh, downtown Minneapolis. And we were singing and we see this big rush of people going upstairs. And lo and behold, we look upstairs and Prince is watching us. Okay. <laughs> so we finish. And um, his keyboardist, Mike, I can't remember the gentleman's last name, but he comes, finds us, and says, Prince wants to talk to you guys. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> sure he does. But indeed he did. We go backstage, we talk to Prince, he praises us for our particular performance, <coughs> asks us what we're doing and where are we going. We said, well, the next thing is uh, we're at the Taste of Minnesota. You know, and it used to be at the Capitol here. Yeah, right. 
And uh, we said, we're at the Taste of Minnesota, July 4th. And he says, well, I'll come see you guys. Once again, we're like, sure, sure you'll come see us. <laughs> Moving forward to July 4th, we're on stage once again singing. You see this big rush of people following. Can't see him because if you've ever if you've ever seen Prince, or if you know anything about Prince, he's about this big. <laughs> he wears heels this big, <laughs> and he's on the stage this big. His body, and his bodyguards are all about six foot six, oh, and two hundred and eighty pounds. Abs at least. That, at that's least. the smallest one. That's the smallest. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's the smallest one. I've been pushed by him. You, yeah. you move very quickly. Yeah, you do. So I see this big rush of people, big charge of people, and in the back, lo and behold, yep, he comes and uh, he watches us once again praises us uh, for our particular performance. And long story short, we end up getting to perform with him mm -hmm. um, later on in life. Really? That's my singing. As far as, as, far as uh, present day, I'm co-worship leader at uh, my church. I write music uh, for a lot of people in the Twin Cities and actually the surrounding regional area. I play keys, um, also play drums, and like I said, I sing and write music. To my dancing life, I was very fortunate. Um, this was, I think, probably 1998. They, I don't believe that it is continued now, but they used to have something called Tapping in the Twin Cities. And it was a, a big tap dance festival that they would have some of the, the best and the greatest individuals in dance come to the Twin Cities and they would throw clinics and then later on have a culminating show at the end. I was very fortunate, and I'm not sure how many jazz fans we have in here or how many people are interested in swing dance or Lindy Hop or Shag or the Jitterbug, mm -hmm. but I was very fortunate um, to learn from an, a, um, a historian whose name is Lance Beneshek, and he happened to know the Nicholas Brothers. Do any of you know who the Nicholas Brothers are? Mm -hmm. The Nicholas Brothers, especially um, for modern day tap, and jazz, they were some of their originators. And when you look at uh, some of the uh, older movies that are still in black and white, 1930s, 1940s, the Nicholas Brothers um, <coughs> were some of the jazz greats. Bunny Briggs, Norma Miller, um, and the Nicholas Brothers uh, were some of the originators of, uh, of the dances that we know today. And had the, the fortunate um, experience to dance on stage with them at the O'Shaughnessy Theater <laughs> at, at uh, St. Kate's. And um, still some of the originals? Yeah, at that time. And wow. I, yeah, yeah, and they were, uh, let's see, Fayard and um, I'm, I'm forgetting to remember his brother's name, but they were they were like 89 years yeah. of age at, oh. at that particular time. And Norma Miller was in her early 90s and Bunny Briggs, all of them. And what was great was they were still, they were still tap still dancing. Good. And that's one of the things that they said, you know, unlike some other dances, it, it almost doesn't matter how old you are, you can always tap. You know, he said, my feet always are moving. So I had that fortunate experience. Um, I've traveled the world uh, teaching dance in uh, Japan and, and China and other countries. I um, taught at the University of Wisconsin River Falls for nine years as a uh, lecturer and instructor there um, from 1998 uh, to actually 2012. I was there as a faculty member and administrator and I, re I got my undergraduate degree in dance and music education and still today people contract me to <coughs> come and do either musical theater or to their particular studios and, and teach jazz or tap or ballet or swing or hip hop, Latin dances. Is also. that what you were teaching at um, River Falls? Yes. <coughs> music and, and I was I was teaching dance and actually uh, physical education and health and health oh, okay. classes, nutrition, biomechanics, different activities. Um, classes. So, um, so yeah, though, though that's kind of my arts life. I, I've been and am a professional singer, choreographer, dancer, and people still contract me to do those things today. I, I really enjoy it. It's one of the ways that I stay in shape, and um, it's it's really like therapy for me. So that's my arts life. <coughs> my athletic life. It was also around that time, a little bit earlier though, in fourth grade that um, you know when you're a kid you play all types of sports. In Phoenix, um, Arizona specifically, and in that region, Texas, Arizona, California, <coughs> the, two, the two sports that 
are, are huge, are actually three, are football, mm -hmm. basketball, and track and field is a big deal. Who's the fastest? It's kind of a neighborhood thing too. You were, you were somebody if you could beat everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and while other people might be playing baseball and shooting hoops and all that other stuff, yeah, you did that, but you always wanted to know who was the fastest. And even yeah. when you seen people on the football field and you knew somebody was the fastest, you'd always try to challenge somebody to a race. So you kind of got your street cred by being the fastest kid in the neighborhood. So um, I played football and basketball and uh, track and field, uh, but the, my two largest loves were football and then track and field. Mm -hmm. And out of the two, track and field has yielded me probably um, and molded me uh, to what I've become now. The reason being is I got to participate in a sport that has men and women together. You know, most sports, if you the basketball team, you practice at this time, the women practice at a different time. Um, and, that, and that's in general, it's, sad, it's always separate. Yeah. But it was great to be able to learn from individuals <coughs> on how to uh, respect women and how women are strong, women are capable, women are intelligent um, from a sporting perspective. I use a lot of analogies in my teaching <coughs> and even in the corporate world and even now in academia that uh, I get from sports about teamwork and being a good teammate and, and being ethical and taking care of yourself and so on and so forth. But uh, moving forward from when I was uh, nine years old uh, through even high school competing and into college, but specifically moving to UW River Falls, I had the fortunate chance of, of um, my, at that time, chairperson, and she was the athletic director, Connie Foster, finding out that I had a track and field background, and she just one day randomly said, hey, I have uh, a, a young lady who, she's the head track coach, and her name is Christy Wagner, and she needs a jumps coach. Do you know anything about jumping? And that actually was my bread and butter in high school and college. I was a long jumper and triple jumper. Mm -hmm. I was fast, but I wasn't the fastest once you get to college. You could be you could be really fast from a certain area, and then you come here and you're just one of the fastest <laughs> people. But I was really good at long jump and really good at triple jump. Um, got many honors throughout my life. Met Christy. Um, she gave me a chance, even though I hadn't had uh, any coaching experience other than volunteering at Burnsville High School in 1992 and 93. Well, she gave me a chance to come see what I could do in helping to coach uh, collegiate athletes. Uh, and at that particular time, River Falls, unfortunately, only had a women's program. They had dropped the men's program due to you know, budget concerns and different things. Well, um, I got to go back into one of my passions and be able to connect with students and be able to um, develop, be able to be a part of developing young women into into very competent and very confident um, women who later on have, have done some great things. And long story short, I stayed there for 13 years coaching track and field. And for most of the time, wasn't paid for it because they didn't have the particular budget, but it wasn't about the money. It was just about the love that I had for the mm -hmm. sport. Um, I have found that I have gotten I have gotten much more elation out of coaching athletes and seeing their learning curve and seeing them achieve really great things than anything that I have ever done in my own athletic career. Um, River Falls brought back, I think it was in 2004, the men's team and uh, from 99 just to this past June, I coached the men's and women's long jumpers, triple jumpers, uh, combined events, decathlon, heptathlon, and then short sprints. Um, I've had three individual national champions, um, a slew full of uh, All-Americans, and to tell you what an All-American is, by the way, for those of you who may not know, is 
you have to achieve a certain level and either run so fast or jump so far in track and field to, to uh, go to the national track meet. And then at that particular um, meet, there's normally in Division Three, and that's what UW River Falls is, there's normally about 90 to 100 teams represented there. And if you can make it in your particular event and finish in the top eight, you're considered All-American. So I've had a slew full of All-Americans. The women's team in 2008 won a team <coughs> national championship for Division Three, and that's probably one of my most proud moments, again, like I said, because there was the team there. They did something all together. This was something that um, had never happened at uh, UW River Falls. We won the first uh, national championship of any particular sport. And it was great for me that it was even the women's team because often women's teams get slighted in, in, in various things, even with Title IX here. So my athletic life, if you will, uh, <coughs> as far as the collegiate realms, uh, stopped this past June when I actually took a job at Normandale Community College. And I'm the Director of Advising Counseling and Career Services there, and of course Normandale no longer has sports. Um, I also, to still continue to feed that bug of athletics and wanting to de develop young men and women and make sure that uh, they get the best experience in their lives from sport, um, I have interest in a training facility that uh, used to be called Blue Chip Sports Academy. <coughs> it's uh, directly across from Lakeville South. My cousin, who's the hitting coach for the St. Paul Saints, um, ended up selling, major or the St. Paul Saints bought majority interest in it and is now called the Saints Sports Academy. And you will find it in a building called Train America, which is ours that we built uh, in 2007 and is directly across from Lakeville. South High School. It's my athletic life. My academic life, uh, I'm a first generation high school student. My father left when I was two years old and uh, my mother remarried my dad and none of them graduated from high school. My mother eventually went and got her GED but none of them actually graduated from high school. So I'm actually a first generation high school student. I didn't know anybody who went to college. No one. Around where I come from, who you are, the, the big deal is graduating high school. I don't know anybody who went to college. But I always wanted to be different than everyone else. If I seen, if I seen that all of them were acting <coughs> a certain way, I wanted to act the other way. This probably, besides a, a, a great mother who she and I are only 17 years apart, a great mother being strong and a, a gr grandmother and great grandmother introducing me to God. Besides that, me just wanting to be an individual and to be as upstanding as I possibly could and as noble as I possibly could to make my mother proud because oftentimes it was just she and I. I wanted to do everything the opposite of what other people did and not in a destructive type of manner. What I meant is, what I mean is, when we would go to parties and everybody else was drinking, and we were in junior high, not high school, junior high, and everybody else was smoking weed and we were in junior high, I didn't want to be like you. When I seen that you weren't going to school and you were getting in trouble, I didn't want to be like you. When I seen that my stepdad was physically abusive to my mother and an alcoholic and abused drugs, I didn't want to be like you. When I seen how hard my mother had to, and this is, a, a, I'm phrasing this, but it's a good thing, when I see how hard my mother had to work and still has to work because of her limited education, I don't want to be like you. And so I ended up going to college. Um, Where? At the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been actually, to, I've been actually to, I started at Normandale, went to the University of Minnesota, and I also finished at um, UW River Falls. My undergraduate degree is actually from UW River Falls. My graduate degree is actually from University of Minnesota in kinesiology. Mm -hmm. What brought you from Phoenix, Arizona to Minnesota? I figured I mean, something. To me, that's the weather. I figured somewhat. Yeah. 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 I figured yeah. somebody would. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 right, exactly. Yeah. I figured somebody would yeah. ask me that. Uh, my mother comes from a family of six. My her, um, There are only two girls, my mother and my aunt, who moved to Minnesota. 
The reason why she moved to Minnesota is my uncle, whom she married, who's from California, went to Arizona State for college. Mm -hmm. My aunt went to Arizona State for college. Right. My uncle got a full ride scholarship to play football yeah. at Arizona State. Yeah. Got drafted to the San Francisco 49ers, mm -hmm. traded to the Minnesota Vikings. Really? He played with Carl uh, Eller and Alan Page and, and Fran Tarkenton. His name is Winlin Hall. He was defensive back mm -hmm. on special mm -hmm. teams. So he, he was part of the Purple Leaders team, and he has, yeah. he has a losing Super Bowl ring. <laughs> <laughs> he lost to the Raiders. Why do you keep wearing that ring? <laughs> <laughs> so I was, really, I was really close and tight with my aunt and her nine children. So I used to always... Like mentioned, too hot, Arizona, I don't, I don't care who you are. When people say a dry heat, my oven's dry at 120 degrees too, but I don't want to say And here's the difference between the Minnesota heat and the Arizona heat. Even when it's 98 degrees here during the day, what is it at night? 70. In Arizona, when it's 118 during the day, it's 100 at night. <laughs> Still hot. So I used to come out here. I used to come out here and hang out with all my cousins, and to tell you the truth, I thought everybody out here was rich. Because as soon as I came out here, everybody has basements, so you got two level homes. Mm -hmm. Everybody I talk to has a cabin. I don't know anybody who doesn't have a cabin, or a boat, <laughs> or jet ski, <laughs> or a, I mean, seriously, I, every, oh, our, our, our cabin, our cabin, that's all I ever heard. I'm like, you have another place besides where you live out here? And you have boats, and you, I thought everybody was rich, so every summer, I always wanted to come out here. Um, now, how I stayed out here, um, since, uh, like I said, my mother and I are 17 years apart, I was actually raised by my mother and my grandmother because she was still in her home. Well, tragically in 89, my grandmother got hit by a car and died. I was out here for that summer, 17-year-old um, little kid. She was more like my mother sometimes than my mother was. I went back for the funeral, and I told my mother I can't stay here. My auntie, my auntie uh, tells me I'm her favorite nephew anyway. She said, you can stay with me. So long story short, I end up staying here. I actually graduated from Burnsville High School. Mm -hmm. So that's the trip of And then you come out here and you meet people and you do things and you go to school and people are encouraging you to you know, achieve greater things. And back home, all I knew were my friends who were in gangs and selling drugs and getting in trouble and people dying, people getting shot, my best friend getting stabbed. This seemed like a better option for me. Now, this, this story's kind of taken a different turn since you asked that. I will tell you, though, that I had two great challenges in Arizona and even moving to Minnesota. My challenge there was that environment that I told you about with the gang infested, the drugs, and all that. My challenge here in the late 80s, moving to Burnsville, Minnesota, nobody looked like me. At Burnsville High School, nobody looked like me except my cousins and they're a couple of friends. So after first after first semester and enduring a little bit of that. Is it because of the beard? <laughs> yes, because of the beard. It's because of lack of hair, the lack of hair. That's really what it's because of lack of hair. Because where I went to school, you talk uh, about Native Americans, I went to school with a lot of folks who were Native American, who were Latino, a lot of Latinos. Caucasians, blacks. I mean, I went to school with just a vast array of individuals to mm -hmm. it's just all Caucasians. And not many of them had had any other cultural experiences with people of color. And so first semester, it was kind of a problem, and I wanted to go back home. But my mother convinced me and mom said, stay a year, see what happens. And then what actually saved <coughs> me was music and track season. Mm -hmm. Because... I was already really fast down there and beating most people down there. <laughs> I'm just telling you, coming up here, I was killing them. <laughs> I was like, oh. And um, we also, that, that reminds me of something else. The last state championship that was won by Burnsville High School was our team in 1990, and I was a receiver on that team. Okay. So, Great at this, great at that. Yeah, I think yeah. I'll stay here a little bit. This is putting a stroke in my ego a little Did bit. Did you play uh, uh, your senior years at, uh, at Burnsville, your own football team? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And my son was on the uh, Jefferson team right at that time. Uh, and you, or not you personally, but the Burnsville team was the big rival. 
Yeah, you know, it's, it was the yep, Eaton Prairie right. of today. It's you're right. Really what yep, it was. You're right. And to beat Burnsville, you're right. that was it. And uh, a crowning moment for, for me and my family was a, my son was a running back, and he okay. had a 69 yard touchdown run against Burnsville. Okay. That was, uh, nothing else mattered after that. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, though. I, I, I look nowadays, and I, I don't know, and it's been a long time, I don't know what happened. Even when <coughs> I go, when I took some of my friends back, and when I met my wife, <coughs> and, and we go to the gym, I said, you will see all championships from the late 80s to mm, about 91, 92. And yeah. I mean, yeah. we were winning everything. We went chess, yeah. it, it, <laughs> golf. I mean, no, I'm saying we were, if you go, yeah, we you were winning were everything. We didn't care about anybody. In 89, we went, I think it was uh, 12 and one. And then 90, it was, it was, um, that wasn't the undefeated season. No, that I think we were eleven and two that season, and then even in '91, mm -hmm. they were undefeated. But then they lost in the first round. I remember to Anoka. It was seven to six. Like Burnsville was just it, yeah, I know. we didn't Eden Prairie. Who <coughs> come get some? <laughs> like we were, we were embarrassing the, the, these these little rich kids. We used to call <laughs> embarrassing these little rich kids. So anyway, I, I end up uh, going to college and I got my undergraduate degree, finished up actually at uh, UW River Falls. That I took a 12-year hiatus because uh, I told you I stopped going to school to, um, to sing. I took a 12-year hi hiatus, went back and um, uh, because the group actually broke up. One of, one of my friends, uh, Jason Moore, got a record deal. Another uh, of my friends, Andre Demps, uh, sang with the sounds of blackness. My buddy, Jerry. Uh, Ferguson, his father was a VP in Ford, and uh, they moved down to Louisville, Kentucky, and he got a great job making a ton of money there. And so we just kind of went our own ways. I'm like, well, I need to finish my education. So I actually went back and finished at UW River Falls, and then a year later got my master's degree at the U in kinesiology, and we, we kind of talked about that. So, um, Bringing me to present day, I currently am at uh, Normandale Community College and <coughs> loving it. I always lived in Burnsville the 14 years that I was driving back and forth to River Falls, 50 something miles one way, so I kind of got tired of that. It took me 14 years, so maybe I'm not that as smart as I think <laughs> I am uh, with the weather and, and everything. And it, it's great. The, the, the commute is only, people say commute. I laugh at that too. I was like, commute? You don't even drive to another state or, or it takes you <laughs> less than an hour. But I always hear people say, yeah, I commute. And I'm like, you just live in St. Paul. But it only takes me, you know, about 15 minutes to get to work. I'm with uh, a great staff there. There are some great people. I met Chuck. That's how I met uh, Chuck. And um, he kind of heard about my story and the different things I do. My life has been serving people whether it's been in athletics or whether it's been in the arts and now in academia, my passion is really just serving people and seeing them get from point A to point B, which is also the definition of a coach. They call them coach buses because they take you from point A to point B. And I get to see a different population of students. I think I've come actually full circle because I told you I actually started my uh, academic career at Normandale. Um, I've taught at, uh, or still do, at DCTC, so I've been at a technical school. I've been at Longfellow Elementary School. I've ran after-school programs at uh, Metcalf Junior High. Uh, I've been a diversity coordinator at Burnsville High School. I've written uh, various plays for uh, Women's History Month, Black History Month, for uh, Lakeville North, for Burnsville High School, also for Cooper. Uh, was at UW River Falls for 14 years, and now I'm at Normandale. So I've been in every, except preschool, I've been in every level of education. And like I said, I, I love to serve. I heard about Rotary and I want to know more about it and still kind of getting my feet wet to see what this is. But um, you will see me become more and more active because I like to be a part of helping people and changing their lives so that they could have a better quality of life. So thank you for listening to me and thank you for your time.